Hi. Today I'm standing in front of. Continue with that. Hi. So right now I'm standing in the EMMC studio. Hi. So right now I'm standing at the EMMC studio, and I'm surrounded by different studio equipments, the lights, cameras. and even a teleprompter in front of which i'm standing apart from the cameraman there are many other people who are going to help me step by step in completing this process my technical crew and so let's take a look at how the whole process is done come with me multimedia instructional messages uses words and pictures that is intended to promote learning the message reflects the idea that the purpose of the multimedia instructional messages are communications or presentations involving a teacher and a learner the instructional part of the definition reflects the idea that the purpose of multimedia is to promote learning in the learner the multimedia part of the definition reflects the idea that the multimedia instructional message is presented using both words and pictures all right now let's take a look at the presentation on lightning storms lightning can be defined as the discharge of electricity resulting from the difference in electrical charges between the cloud and the ground when the surface of the earth is warm moist air near the earth's surface becomes heated and rises rapidly producing an updraft as the air in these updrafts cools water vapor condenses into water droplets and forms a cloud the cloud stop extends above the freezing level at this altitude the air temperature is well below freezing so the upper portion of the cloud is composed of tiny ice crystals so friends what we just witnessed is a presentation of a 500 word passage but the problem is a student who watches this presentation might find it really difficult to comprehend the whole idea more than that in the research is done on the retention factor it was found that students who read a 500 word passage they do not actually perform well on tests of retention and transfer even if they are given tests immediately after they finish reading the passage So what we understand from this is that the time honored traditional methods of presentation does not seem to work so well. So what we're witnessing right now is the illustrator at work. The illustrations are made based on the instruction that the teacher gives. And when it's complete it is then scanned and converted to a graphic image which will then be incorporated into the final product lightning can be defined as the discharge of electricity resulting from the difference in electrical charges between the cloud and the ground when the surface of the earth is warm moist air near the earth's surface becomes heated and rises rapidly producing an updraft as the air in these updrafts cools water vapor condenses into water droplets and forms a cloud air rises water condenses water crystals fall wind is dragged downward negative charges fall to the bottom of the cloud the leaders meet negative charges rush down positive charges rush up these are the explanation units because they are the main steps in the explanation 
The same process used in producing illustrations can be used to generate multimedia lessons on a computer-based environment. Lightning can be defined as the discharge of electricity resulting from the difference in electrical charges between the cloud and the ground. When the surface of the earth is warm, moist air near the earth's surface becomes heated and rises rapidly, producing an updraft. As the air in these updrafts cools, water vapor condenses into water droplets and forms a cloud. The cloud stop extends above the freezing level. At this altitude, the air temperature is well below freezing, so the upper portion of the cloud is composed of tiny ice crystals. Eventually, the water droplets and ice crystals in the cloud become too large to be suspended by updrafts. Within the cloud, the moving air causes electrical charges to build, although scientists do not fully understand how it occurs. Most believe that the charge results from the collision of the cloud's light, rising water droplets and tiny pieces of ice against hail and other heavier falling particles. The negatively charged particles fall to the bottom of the cloud and most of the positively charged particles rise to the top. The first stroke of a cloud-to-ground lightning flash is started by a stepped leader. Many scientists believe that it is triggered by a spark between the areas of positive and negative charges within the cloud. A stepped leader moves downward in steps, each of which is about 50 yards long and lasts for about one millionth of a second. It pauses between steps for about a millionth of a second. As a step leader nears the ground, positively charged upward moving leaders travel up from such objects as trees and buildings to meet negative charges. Usually, the upward moving leader from the tallest object is the first to meet the step leader and complete a path between cloud and earth. The two step leaders generally meet about 165 feet above the ground. Negatively charged particles then rush from the cloud to the ground along the path created by the leaders. It is not very bright and usually has many branches. As the step leader nears the ground, it induces an opposite charge, so positively charged particles from the ground rush upward along the same path. This upward motion of the current is a return stroke and it reaches a cloud in about 70 microseconds. Hi! Have you ever wondered how a lightning happens? Well, let's take a look. In the first step, cool moist air moves over a warmer surface on the earth and then it gets heated. In the next step, this warmed moist air they start to rise rapidly onto the sky. Now this upward motion, this is the updraft. What happens here is that when the air in this updraft cools, the water vapor condenses into water droplets and these water droplets then end up forming the cloud. Now, if you imagine that this is the freezing level. We can see that the upper part of the cloud extends above the freezing level.